Wow, that was, that was big. <laughs> this is Eric. Uh, I first met Eric when he was a sophomore in high school. He was 15 years old, and he could not wait to turn 16. Not because he was excited about getting a car, no. He couldn't wait to turn 16 because then he could legally drop out of high school. You see, Eric was frustrated. He hated school. He was failing math and science. He was struggling with trying to find a purpose for everything that he was required him to do in school. He asked that same question that I think all of us have always asked once in our lifetime, which is, when am I ever going to use any of this in my everyday life? So, nobody in Eric's family had ever gone to college, so he thought his best option in life was to drop out of school and join the family business in landscaping. As sad as this seems, Eric isn't the only one that feels this way. So many of our students feel the same way today. Aside from the fact they're never given the opportunity to actually do anything, except maybe take tests, they're also faced with this shocking rate at which new technologies and human knowledge are being developed. Now, up until about 1900, it took us about 100 years for human knowledge to double. What I mean by human knowledge is the sum of everything we knew up until this point in time. So math and science, medicine, everything we knew took 100 years to double. Today, this doubling is taking place every 13 months. At this present rate, of exponential growth, it is expected that this doubling will take place every 12 hours. So every single day, twice a day, what we know is going to double. Well, this is having a huge effect on teachers and their students. For students, it means much of what they're going to learn their first two years of college, by the time they're seniors, it's going to be outdated and obsolete. But more importantly, in order for them to remain employed, they're going to have to go back to school again and again to retrain to keep up with emerging technologies. For teachers, this means we're being asked to prepare students for jobs that don't exist yet, using technologies that haven't been invented yet, and trying to solve problems that we don't even know are problems yet. All this while using an antiquated education system that was designed for the Industrial Revolution is actually modeled after a country that doesn't even exist anymore. I believe all this can be changed by doing one thing, creating the next generation of innovators. This is what made us the greatest economy on the planet. We innovated. We created all this great technology that everybody else wanted, and they paid us huge amounts of money for it. In fact, it put billions of dollars into our economy every single year. And then, for whatever reason, we stopped doing it. Fewer and fewer of our students went into science, technology, engineering, and math. In fact, today, only 3% of our graduating seniors nationwide are going to engineering school. That's a 33% drop over the last decade. You know, Einstein once said, we cannot solve our problems by using the same thinking we use to create them. In other words, we cannot solve our educational problems simply by modifying the current system. We have to instead change our focus from a teacher-centered environment to a student-centered one. Most importantly, though, we have to teach our kids how to teach themselves. All of us have heard that old story, right? You give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. I want to take that a step further. I don't want to teach my students how to fish. I want to teach them how to learn. Because if they can learn how to learn, they can teach themselves how to fish or to do anything else they want to do. This is what's truly powerful. Most experts believe the best way to do this is through project-based education. Now, you may be familiar with project-based education, but what I'm not talking about here is just taking a few projects and then inserting them into the curriculum. I'm talking about a re radical reconstruction of the entire, entire educational system and our Systems Go Aerospace Engineering program that we do at our school is a very good example of how this can be done in any classroom. 
The year-long projects we do pull into play almost every subject in education. These kids are doing everything. They're doing math, they're doing science, they're doing professional writing. They also have to do economics because they keep track of their own budget because they purchase all their own materials. My students oversee the entire program and project, and they fabricate themselves over 90% of the rocket in our very own machine shop. The, system be sorry, the program began nine years ago with 17 kids in the junior class. That year, my students built a rocket capable of taking a one-pound payload to an altitude of one mile high. Since then, we've grown to 150 students across all four grade levels. We no longer build the one-pound, one-mile rockets anymore. My juniors now build rockets that are capable of breaking the sound barrier. They go three times that high. My seniors, on the other hand, some of them are out there, by the way, they research, design, and fabricate a rocket capable of taking a 35-pound payload to an altitude of 100,000 feet at speeds in excess of Mach 3. That's over three times the speed of sound. Not with one of these rockets, one of these. These rockets are so sophisticated that me and my students travel to White Sands Missile Testing Range in the summertime, and the military launches them for us. <laughs> Can't do this in your backyard. <laughs> I brought along a couple of my nose cones because, just to get an idea of how big they are, and I couldn't put the whole rocket on the stage, so we went with the nose cones. This nose cone was on one of our transonics rockets from last year, one of our rockets that broke the sound barrier. We did three of these last year. This nose cone is going to be going on one of our rockets that were taken to White Sands this summer that we're going to be launching there. The student who built this nose cone invested over 600 hours of their own time fabricating this by hand out of aluminum, fiberglass, and carbon fiber. So, just how successful has our program been? Remember earlier I said that 3% of American seniors are going to engineering school, right? 90% of our kids are going to some of the best engineering schools in the country. In fact, Embry-Riddle, the number one aerospace engineering school in the entire country for the last 16 years in a row, created a special scholarship just for Systems Go kids. That's how bad they want them. This is one of my former students, Julia. Julia was a lot like Eric. She also hated math and science. She was so adamant about this that she told her chemistry teacher the year I met her, that she was going to do the absolute minimum to get by, and when she was done, she was never going to think about it again. And then she joined my class. Since then, Julia has graduated from the University of Washington with a degree in Earth and Space Sciences. She has interned at NASA. She has built what they call penetrator rockets for NASA. So instead of like our rockets that fire up, Julia's rockets do the opposite. They fire down. They penetrate two meters into the ground, pull core samples up so they can analyze that. Julia is current, we're currently working on her master's degree in planetary and space sciences, but her ultimate goal is to become the first female astronaut on Mars. I'm wearing this t-shirt for her, by the way. <laughs> Doing the geological survey of that planet. All this from a young lady who hated math and science. Programs like this are so successful because the students, they're so engaged. They care so much about their projects that they literally invest hundreds of hours during the school year and then much of their summer working in a hot machine shop, fabricating and assembling these rockets, getting them ready for white sands. Remember Eric, the young man? Couldn't wait to drop out of high school. Eric built that nose cone his senior year. As we speak, Eric is working at NASA. He is part of a group who is developing the rocket engines that are going in NASA's Space Launch System. 
This is the most powerful, largest rocket that has ever been built. And he's part of the group building that. I asked him, Eric, what did your parents say when you told them you got the job? He said, my mom, well, my dad couldn't speak. He said he just came over and he hugged me for like a really long time. <laughs> and uh, my mom, she hasn't stopped crying yet. Uh, coincidentally, Eric sent me a postcard that I just received yesterday. And I wanted to share it with you. It said, Mr. Lang, it is amazing what two years can do for someone. I went from struggling in science to now designing a configuration of the EBS, which is the new engine that's going to be put on the test stand for the SLS, the Space Launch System. Thank you so much for what you've done. You know, through the years I've tried to explain to people just the scope and the size of what this program is all about. And inevitably, people think, well, Estes rockets, right? And so it's easier for me to just show you a video rather than to try to explain it. So let's take a look at a video from one of our launches. OK, this rock is Alamo Heights. That rocket weighed in about 650 pounds. Longest two minutes of my life. I've seen that video hundreds of times and it, it still affects me the same way. I get so choked up. Um, the problems we went to, through to get that rocket on the launch pad would be a whole other TED talk all on its own. Um, but it's like I tell my students, it's not if something goes wrong, it's when and everything went wrong. But you know, as impressive as these student built rockets are, they're not the final valuable product of this program. The students, they are truly the real valuable product of this program. Their skill set, their abilities, what they can actually do. This is what is truly valuable. For students like Eric and Julia and so many other kids, Systems Go Aerospace Project Based Learning has provided the launch pad to grow their confidence, to learn how to learn, and to ignite the innovators of tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs>